So in this video, we're looking at the Pro module of Flux. Now, I've done two videos previously on the Schnell and the Dev versions of Flux, which I'll put a link to in the video uh, description below. And I've also done a beginner's tutorial showing how to get started using this in the first place, and I'll also put a link to that. And that's because I use the replicate.com um, platform to host Flux Pro or to use Flux Pro Dev and Schnell and all the LoRa's as well. So basically, if you want to use Flux and you want to use it the way I personally do, then check out the beginner's tutorial and it'll go through what you need to do. So I'm here on the screen. I'm just going to have a look down and go through the different settings, parameters, how they compare to the other models and just sort of run a few test prompts and see what we get. So the, the prompt that is put in is it's like it's sample prompt is the world's largest black forest cake, the size of a building surrounded by trees, the black forest. And obviously got a very impressive looking image here, lots of detail. And it's managed to recreate the, the vision of that prompt very well, I think. So we've got aspect ratio. That's pretty typical. Just whatever you like for your own uses. That's just for taste. Number of steps. Number of diffusion steps. Now, this this is um, only in the pro version on, on replicate.com anyway, this particular slider. And this is how many diffusion steps there are in the process of creating the image. Now, the default is 25 and the maximum is 50. Now you can think of this as like opportunities for it to add more detail. So for every diffusion step, it's able to um, add more and more changes, therefore potential quality and detail um, additions to the image, but up to a certain point. So people have used stable diffusion before and, and variants of that and have had experience will probably know that there's a temptation to push the steps really high thinking that the higher number equals a better quality image. But after a certain point, you get diminishing returns, and all it does is take a long time, cost more money, and um, not really change your image much. So I've been experimenting with this, and I think 25 is a really good, solid default to play with. The highest I personally go is like 35. Anything more than that, and it just takes longer, costs more, um, and you just don't notice any real benefit. So... Play around with it if you like, but I'd be happy to keep that as the default for almost everything. So go down to the guidance number. Let's just read out what it says here. Controls the balance between adherence to the text prompt and image quality diversity. Higher values make the output more closely match the prompt, but may reduce overall image quality. Lower values allow for creative freedom, but blah, 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 blah. Right, so you can read that on the screen. But in my experience, this works like a slider of realism versus creative and what i mean by that is the default three is a good sweet spot for most things if you're trying to prompt to a realistic say photo effect like a realistic photograph and you're and it's not quite it's looking a little bit artificial still then you can lower the guidance number and what if you lower it don't go too far because you go down right to the bottom like near two it, it goes you can get a lot of artifacts but say if you drop it down to three or two and a half this will give you generally a more realistic look to the image, um, but sacrificing some of the creative cohesion. So if you if you just want a sort of a a realistic portrait photo of you know someone in a kitchen doing whatever, then you can lower this and it will probably give you a more genuine photographic look, or a lot of the time it will. But if you're asking for something that's a bit out of the ordinary, like you know someone in in a kitchen who's you know, juggling flaming torches or something like that, then lowering the guidance may not be able to generate that result. Whereas increasing the guidance will give you a better chance for it to adapt to the creative visuals, but it will start to get a little bit more processed look and a little bit more illustrative and cartoony, perhaps the higher you go. But three, again, is a really good solid for this. I would I would not touch that unless you're not getting, if you're, unless you're trying to prompt through a realistic photographic style and you feel that you're not getting just quite realistic enough then i'd play with dropping that and on the other hand if you're trying to prompt for something quite um, creative and abstract and you're not quite getting um, what you're asking for you feel free to increase it a bit but avoid going to the extremes because it will just destroy the image 
Interval two, what does this mean? So interval number, it's a setting that increases the variance in possible outputs, letting the model be a tad more dynamic in what outputs it may produce in terms of composition, color detail, and prompt interpretation. Setting this value low will ensure strong prompt following with more consistent outputs. Setting it high will produce more dynamic or varied outputs. So as it says, and the default is two, if you're running batches of images and they're all very, very samey and you just wish they had a little bit more variety, you can increase this interval. And it will give you a little bit, you know, slightly different angles, maybe a slightly different, um, like it says here, color composition detail and sort of interpretation of the prompt. It can vary. So if you are getting too much variance in your results for the same prompt, then you can lower it. It's like a really, really, really mild version of what would be like chaos in mid journey or something like that. Okay. So safety tolerance honestly i don't really understand what that is in relation to replicate.com because um i think anything that's anything that's like counted as not safe for work or anything will be filtered automatically on the official models on here so i'm not sure what the safety tolerance is relates to but i've not found it to really make any difference to the resulting images seed we've explained seed in um the dev video so if you check that out um, you'll be able to get the information you need on how that works. And the output format is just your choice of file format. But again, anything that's got a quality slider associated to it, I would put that at, at least 90 upwards because um, 80 does have notable quality reduction on fine details like hair and things like that. So now come down to the price. Now, if you haven't seen the previous videos, just to put it into context, the Schnell version, which is the quickest, lowest cost, um, and in theory, less capable model, is 0.3 cents an image. So you get over 300 images for $1. Then onto dev, it's 3 cents an image, and on which is obviously a large jump in cost, but still very, very cost effective for the quality bump that you get. And here we're on to five cents an image. So all of a sudden you're going from getting over 300 images on the lowest end model to less than 20 for a dollar on the high end model. But that is reflected in the quality of the images. So enough talking, I'm gonna go and get the same three prompts that I ran in the, in the videos for the previous two models. And I'm gonna put them in here and I'm gonna see what we get. Out of shape grey British short hair cat lifting weights in a gym with a white towel around its neck with a white towel around its neck. I'll run this. And while it's running, I will talk because you'll notice that what you don't get on this that you did have on the other two models is number of generations. You it just does one. On on replicate.com anyway, you can run flux on other platforms that may give you different options, but I'm just talking about what I can see on this particular site. And you can only run one image at a time in the pro mode. And that looks very good. I mean, his hands are a bit, got a bit of a weird human hand finger sort of thing going on. But apart from that, the detail is uh, incredibly good. Really nice, um, really nice textures. The cat looks realistic. There's just lots of fine detail. Even on the handle of the bar, you can see some kind of knurling effect going on there. So, um, yeah, it's a click to have another look, a closer look. And yeah, that's really nice. We can obviously keep running them. Let me run one more while we're talking. And I'll just see what different what different um, result we get. Okay, so again, good high quality image. It's stuck to the prompt. The pause look again a little bit strange in this, but that's not a fault of the model per se. That's just me trying to get a cat to hold an object like a human would. It's sort of confusing it a bit, but textures are great all there. Really sharp, lovely rendering background, everything's where it should be, and there's plenty of detail. So let me go on to another prompt that we used in the previous examples. Moody portrait of a depressed clown with half worn makeup smoking a cigarette. So of course we're going for kind of um, dark moody joker type vibes with this one. So I'm gonna click run. But also it's what's point what's worth pointing out is images like the previous one where the cat's holding a, a weight in the gym to barbell or whatever, the aspect ratio can help you or harm you in that. So we just kept it as a square for a generic result. If we'd have actually gone three by two or 16 by nine and had it wider, 
you probably have more of a natural position with the hands holding the bar. Whereas if you go for more of a portrait version, it would have all been too cramped because it's trying to fit that into the different aspect ratio. Okay, now that's that's a nice little detail. The cigarette looks strange. AI in general, depending on what platform, even mid-journey, stable diffusion, um, variants of that, um, find it hard to make cigarettes look correct. A lot of the time you just get sort of random bits of paper on them and different colours, but ton of detail all the skin texture there you can see it's um yeah very impressive i'm just going to run that again just to see what we get for another generation because on this model obviously we don't get those multiple generations like we get on the other models that allow you to select up to four um per run i think because this is just slower and there's some bigger costs associated to it they probably don't want it to be um backed up and sort of bottlenecked by people running bunches and bunches of jobs with four images in. So here, let's click and have a look. We've got a really nice detailed portrait with an obvious problem being he's got a cigarette coming out of his mouth and then a very strange looking cigarette in his hand. Now to be to be to be fair, if you really like this shot apart from that, that would be a an easy removal in photo editing software. I personally use Photo P because it's basically a cloud of photoshop and it's free so you could remove that no problem and then you'd have an image that makes a lot more sense so definitely don't throw away a bin images like this just because they're not quite right if everything else in the image is right it's worth the time it takes to do a little bit of editing okay so we're going to go for the last example now which the other two models did really well even the chanel model did a really good job at this and it's a black muscle car driving in a desert. The sky's dark, moody, atmosphere. The dust is red, photorealistic. So, while well, this is generating, I'll just mention, I was quite surprised in the Chanel version of this because it delivered still a really good quality result and obviously really cheap and fast. So it really depends on the subject matter you're prompting and how your prompting is for the quality result you get on the lower models. Um, it can be a bit of a look of the draw, but when you find something that works well with it, you can um, save a ton of time and money by uh, sticking with that. So this is a nice image. Let me have a look. We've got some nice highlights and we've got the dust kicking up and things like that. I wouldn't honestly say it was any better, um, subjectively, of course, than the previous, than the previous models, even the, the lower end model. So on this one, I'm just going to run it again and see what we get. The fine details will probably be better. Um, sort of highlight details in the car will probably be better, but the overall visual impact um, is probably not on, not a drastic improvement on even the, the Chanel model, where it would have been cost a fraction of the time. Yeah, I mean, it looks good, but it's actually lacking some of the dynamic appeal of some of the other ones. So mm, we'll have to see about that when we compare them.